Um, I hope you're enjoying the conference so far. I will be presenting um, an NLP research and natural language processing research of mine uh, today, which my teammates and I called ESG BERT. Uh, my teammates are also students along with me at University of California, Berkeley in the United States. Um, and their names are Robert, Robert Duca and Yitzhak Zhang. Environment, social, and governance, which I will refer to as ESG, are non-financial factors that are garnering attention from investors as they increasingly look to include these in finding risk and growth opportunities. Some of this attention is also driven by clients who now more than ever are demanding for their money to be managed and invested responsibly. As the interest in ESG grows, so does the need for investors to have access to consumable ESG information. Since most of this is in text form, we saw an opportunity to apply natural language processing techniques for classification tasks for ESG text. In early 1900s, 1990s, fewer than 20 publicly listed companies issued reports that included ESG data. That number grew to almost 6,000 by 2014. Regulations for SEC filings in the US and all around the world um, have driven motivation for these disclosures. Finally, the advances in NLP, particularly those with word embeddings, have made great leaps in the past two decades. Word embeddings um, are a way of representing words which are discrete in a continuous vector space. This is done in various ways, but the newer methods that involve contextual representation of words were, were what really gave us confidence to pursue our research. Before this advancement, word embeddings did not capture context, and all of us at times have realized how a word's meaning can differ from context to context. For example, in English, I'm going to open a bank account has a different meaning of bank than I'm going for a picnic by the river bank. With Elmo and Bert, these context embeddings became popular. We wanted to see if training the BERT model that would have a specific context of environment, social, and governance literature for companies could benefit uh, the classification tasks that we were trying to do for ESG purposes. Related research findings include previously tackled domain-specific language models, uh, for example, in BioBERT um, and FinBERT, that found success in their specific classification tasks. These models are built on top of BERT, which I will describe shortly. Additionally, some NLP research was done, mainly around the amount of non-financial information in disclosures that publicly, public companies disclosed, not necessarily on the content of the non-financial information. These studies, however, did promise in the did show promise in the extraction of environment performance of a company through such text. So we decided to use publicly disclosed SEC filings from S&P 500 companies in the US to see progress in their environmental activities and investments through, through, through two classification tasks, whether there was a change or not in their environmental risk score and whether the change was positive or not for each company for each quarter. The data that we used was three folds. The first one was um, environment, social, and governance literature to build environment, social, and governance context in the word embeddings and weights of our model. We used literature in form of guides, case studies, blogs, reports, and surveys hosted on uh, a website by a project called Accounting for Sustainability. For our classification, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we used publicly disclosed SEC filings. And for our labels, because we did a supervised um, machine learning task, we used um, company, uh, if for each company, for each quarter, uh, an environment risk score provided by a company called Sustainalytics. It's an analytical company that analyzes multiple, all of the S&P 500 companies and scores them for their environment risk each quarter. 
BERT. It stands for bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. It has four main components. A word piece, to word piece tokenizer, which tokenizes a sentence into words and subwords. A transformer, which is a deep learning model that adopts the mechanism of self-attention, differentially weighting the significance of each part of input data. A masked language modeling task that allows it to get bidirectional learning. The task randomly masks some of the tokens from the input and predicts the masked words based on context only. And a next sentence prediction task that captures the relationship between two sentences, which is not directly captured at word level language modeling. Now BERT has three types of word, three types of embeddings to represent the input tokens that, I mean, that go into the model. As you can see on the left, there are positional embeddings since transformers, uh, which are used in BERT, unlike LSTM or RNNs, which are also used for language modeling, don't have localized context. So it uses these positional embeddings to know what position each token, um, which somewhat represents a word, is in. I say somewhat because the word talk, word talk, word piece tokenizer that I mentioned in the previous slide stack, breaks the input up into words and subwords. Um, so something like reads and reading just becomes um, gets broken back into read and ing and read and s respectively. Segment embeddings. Uh, the second type of embe embeddings for the inputs are segment embeddings that are used to represent different parts of the input. For example, if one is a question and another is an answer, the, the segment embeddings would represent that. And token embeddings, which are learned from the mass language modeling and next pre sentence prediction tasks that I mentioned in the last slide. The, there is one special token, which is the C token that you see at the very beginning of um, the tokens that are represented in green on the left. And this token is used for classification tasks. So it encodes all of the information about an input um, and, and its association with the classification task that you're trying to do. For example, if you were trying to do sentiment analysis, then it would encode um, you know, whether there is positive, negative, or neutral sentiment in the given input. The trained embeddings and weights in the model are then fine-tuned, as you can see on the right, um, on downstream tasks, which in BERT, the, the original paper of BERT, were um, a sentence pair classification task, MNLI, a sentence tagging task, NER, and a question answering task, SQUAD. The mass language modeling task, as seen in the pre-training part of the Burke architecture, is what we use to build the environment-specific context for our model called ESG BERT. So we pre-train ESG BERT, I mean, we pre-train uh, BERT's weights on ESG-specific corpus. Um, since the text in our research was also English because we were targeting mostly US companies, uh, we, we did not want to forego the benefit of pre-trained weights on such a large English corpus, which BERT was trained on. When I say large, it was 3000 million words. Uh, it was large at that time. Now we have seen more language models that are trained on even larger corpuses. However, we wanted to take that um, benefit of the English language learned weights and train on top of that uh, a language model that would learn environment context. When I say environment context, it's um, I'd like you to think something around like the word oil. So generally the word oil will have some association with food or skin or fat. Uh, but in, when, when we talk about environment, social and governance literature with companies, oil will also be associated with spills or companies that um, may or may not have hold the best environment standards. So our final ESG 
architecture was using the pre-trained weights um, along and pre-training them further on ESG corpus to have ESG context, we fine-tuned the model by using those weights and the training that ex and, and training them on extracted input from SEC filings to predict whether there was a change or not in the environmental risk score for that company for that quarter, and if there was a change, whether that was positive or negative. I say extracted input because SEC filings for each company have contained a lot of information. They are pages and pages long, and BERT's inputs are only 512 tokens, which means just around two or three sentences. The SEC filings also contain a lot of information, mostly financial. To be able to extract the non-financial information, particularly that relevant to ESG, was another machine learning task that our group took on. We used an architecture published as Universal Sentence Encoder. And Universal Sentence Encoder has two architectures that are mentioned in their paper, a transformers architecture and a deep averaging network of deep averaging network architecture. We use the deep averaging network version of it um, to encode every sentence in our document for every company for every quarter. We then used a benchmark sentence, which contained a lot of environment specific words and encoded that with the same encoder. Then using cosine similarity, we ranked sentences based on how similar they were to the benchmark sentence. We used the top three sentences from the document cut off or padded the ones that did not have 512 tokens to ensure that every input was given exactly 512 tokens. And then we fine tuned the language model with the sequence classification task with the three most relevant sentences as input and output as the environment risk scores for each company for each quarter obtained by Sustainalytics as mentioned in the data slide. To summarize, we collected ESG specific data, pre trained the BERT weights with a mass language modeling task to have ESG specific context embedded in the weights. And then we extracted relevant sentences for our input for our classification task using universal sentence encoder and fine tuned our model for that. Our results for the classification tasks that we defined were better than BERT and the common class prediction. I mentioned common class prediction because other models that were, that were used as baseline like naive Bayes did not perform as well as even the common class prediction. With our research, we strengthened the confidence in learning the, that the context learned on domain specific corpus can benefit downstream classification tasks in a language model. And we anticipate that ESG BERT's trained pre-trained weights uh, that have ESG context can be used for multiple classification tasks related to environment, social, and governance risks that are presented in a company through their uh, publicly disclosed or privately disclosed disclosures. Additionally, these weights can be enhanced by training on additional ESG corpora, like ESG disclosures that companies have now started to release uh, on their individual websites or have press releases. Um, and we believe that these will be even more helpful because these will have these will have a full focus on environment, social and governance practices and investments from these companies um, instead of the SEC filings that we had to use um, because they were the most readily available at the time of our research. <clears throat> 